we're going to make an artificial rainstorm with common patching techniques. It's going to look like this and sound like this. You can make the patch with me through this video or you can download it at the patch storage link or as part of my patch collection on my Kofi page. Links to those are in the description. Let's begin with the wind. We'll need a noise source, a filter, and an LFO or some sort of chaos. I'm using the stock noise generator, the boomstick low pass filter, and Caudal, both of those by Volt. I'm going to take the white noise output and throw it into the boomstick and from there to the mixer. Let's turn the first cutoff CV control up a smidge and the second down a nudge. Now I'm going to turn the filter cutoff to around 69%. Nice. We'll connect two outputs from Caudal, choose any that you like, and plug them into the cutoff CV controls. It's a little too fast for my ears with the default settings, so I'm going to turn down the speed knob on Caudal, maybe negative 0.4. Just a heads up, when you're turning these knobs, if you click them and then hold shift, you'll turn them super fast, and if you hold control, they'll turn much slower. So anyways, now we have a super basic wind. Here's how it sounds. The boomstick is limiting the amount of high frequencies coming from the white noise, and Caudal is adjusting the cutoff point of that limitation. This creates the effect of a wind that is gusty and changing. It also has some of the effects of the wind going through foliage as the high frequencies poke through when the filter goes up. If you want the sound to be more stereo, you can do something that's pretty sweet. Bring in the vector mixer by... Uh... Nis nisty. I'm going to split it so we have left and right. You could do that by holding control while pulling the cables. Now that goes into the main mixer. If the red dot is high on this graph, then the sound source is louder. And if the dot is left or right, it pans the sound to the sides. I want to record some subtle panning of the sound so it's more natural. It helps if you're zoomed in a lot. I'm going to hit the auto record keyframes button and then just move this dot around a bit. When I'm done, I'll turn record off, click loop on, and then hit run. Now it runs that sequence and we have a subtle pan of the wind. If you make the sequence longer, it'll be harder for the listener to recognize the loop point. Also, small smooth movements are best. If you go too big and loopy, it'll start to sound like waves, which is cool, but save it for another patch. We're working on wind in this one, buddy. Alternatively, we can power the stereo movement with Caldal, which we conveniently have right here. We just need to add an attenuverter so that we can limit how much it moves. I'm going to use the dual attenuverter by Bufaco. I'm going to plug in a random output from Caldal to the top attenuverter and a different output to the bottom one. These then go to the X position and Y position inputs on the vector map. Now we just turn these knobby knobs a little so the movement is subtle. Here are the settings I chose, but you can adjust it to your personal tastes. I prefer using Caldol over recording the keyframes on the vector mixer because it's more random. But different strokes for different folks, choose whichever you think is best. This wind is pretty good, but I want it to be more full, so we're going to mix in a couple more noise sources. Let's bring in a small mixer and add a bit of pink noise, which naturally sounds like a rainy wind, and red noise, which is nice and deep. I'm going to use the same filter trick we used for the first wind sound, so let's bring in another boomstick by pressing Ctrl D on this one. I'll use different outputs from Caldal and adjust the attenuverters of the boomstick in the opposite directions of the first boomstick. This is how I'm mixing the sound sources. I have a reverb set up as a send effect on the main mixer. I'm going to give each of these channels just a touch of reverb to round it out. 
And that completes the wind. Here's how it sounds. Now let's bring in some rain. I'm going to start out by muting these so that we can focus on the rain sound. The rain consists of two mixed noises that make a crunchy, chattery rain, the type that's hitting a hard surface or falling on leafy trees. To make the first sound, we'll need to bring in two filters and a VCA. I'm going to set them up like this so they look pretty. I'll control the VCA with red noise, so I'll pull a cable from the noise source and plug it into the VCA's CV control. Then I'll use white noise as the audio source, so that goes right into the input of the VCA. I chose tangents as my filter because it has low, band, and high pass inputs. The output from the VCA goes into the first tangents band pass input. Let's increase the resonance on this guy to about 0.32. Now the output goes into the following tangents low pass input. Let's increase the cutoff point and the resonance on this one as well. Finally, that goes to the first input of the small mixer, and let's put the output to channel 3 of the main mixer. Here's what that sounds like. We get a staticky crunch. Our VCA is opening very quickly and frequently, letting out bits of filtered white noise similar to the sound of rain hitting a roof and pavement. For the next sound, let's bring in T-Wex. T-Wex. T-Wex for some uh, decimation action, and two more tangent filters. I'll run pink noise into the chomp input of TUX. Let's adjust the setting of the chomp function, which is a decimator, by turning the knob to about 4900 hertz. Then let's increase the chomp dry wet mix to about 70%. The decimator is going to add some grit to the filtered noise, so it'll have like a sprinkly sound to it, typical of rain. The output from TUX goes to the first tangent's bandpass, and then to the second tangent's low pass, just like we did before, but we'll adjust the cutoffs differently. The first cutoff goes to about three quarters, and the resonance goes up to about half. Let's bring the drive up as well. And the second tangent has a similar settings at 60% for the cutoff, 36% for the resonance, and 1.35 on the drive knob. Plug it into channel 2 of the small mixer and bring the slider back to negative 29 dB. Let's give it a touch of reverb from the send effect. I also have delay as a send effect. I'm going to hit it with a tinkle. Last thing we're making is some thunder. We're going to want a random trigger source. And for that, I'm going to bring in the stock random module and a push module. I'm going to put the trig output from the random to the push input of the push module, and I'll press the button here that initiates the hold feature. Let's bring the random and shape slider all the way down, dial the probability back to about 50%, and set the clock rate to approximately 0.046. This will cause an infrequent trigger that will only pop 50% of the time, which is perfect for unpredictable thunder. We'll want this trigger to start in ADSR, so I'll bring in the stock one and adjust the envelope. Thunder has a lightning fast attack and a super long release. To make that, I'll put the attack all the way down and the release at about 5,000 milliseconds or so. This entire patch has used noise as the sound source, and we're not going to change that now. We're using white noise again, and I'm going to send it from the noise module to the input of the VCA. The envelope we just made will control the VCA by plugging it into the CV input. Now we'll need three filters back to back. I'm using the stock filter for this one. Let's chain the outputs and inputs like this, low pass, then low pass again, then high pass. Adjusting these filters is going to give us our thunder. The first filter determines how much bite the thunder has. I want it to be almost all the way up, and let's give it a drive boost as well. The second filter is going to be dynamic and will adjust following the envelope, so as the lightning strikes, it has more high end, but as time goes on, it'll only have the rumble of the thunder. We need to modulate the cutoff with the same envelope we made, so we'll pull a cable from the envelope output and plug it into the cut CV port. Now turn the attenuverter up a smidge. I'm going to bring the cutoff to about 950 hertz and get a little drive boost as well. We want to have some distortion because it will sound more realistic.
Now the last filter will determine how much rumble the thunder has. If the cutoff is all the way down, there will be lots of low end, and all the way up will have none. I want it to be a little lower than 50%. I went with 126 hertz. Now another slight drive boost, and here's how it sounds on its own. And here it is with everything else. I'd like to encourage you to experiment with twisting all of these knobs and adding more sounds. Here's an example of something fun. I added another thunder just by copying this one. You could do that quickly by box selecting all of these and hitting Control Shift D. That way it copies all the cables too. I modified this one so a quick burst of triggers occurs instead of a single trigger. I also adjusted the filter so it's a low and rumbly thunder, like thunder in the distance. Sounds great when mixed in with everything. And that's all for this one. If you like this kind of stuff, please consider liking and subscribing. You can find all of my content on my Ko-fi page, and everything is 100% free. ko-fi.com slash yourpalrob Big thank you to everyone, and I hope that you have a great day. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.